I listen to every single artist on this lineup. First artist I want to see is Danny Lux. Danny Lux is actually from Palm Springs. He's from the Coachella Valley. Like a modern, like Gen Z, Sierreño, you know, talking about sad stuff. And But I want to see him because he's local and it's like the music that I like the most. Dochi is somebody I want to see. Dochi, just for that one song. Wednesday or Thursday, they're going to drop the set times. And that's where we're going to make tough decisions of which artists we're going to be able to see over the others. You might get somebody you want to see at the outdoor theater. And there's also somebody else you want to see at the Sahara tent. And that's going to be terrible. Whatever decision you end up making, you're going to have a good time. It reminds me of like rock music when i used to listen to rock back in the 2000s like the middle of the 2000s late 2000s that's the type of music it feels like when i listen to young blood and that's somebody i want to see i love rock i think watching rock bands at festivals it's like it's just meant to be there's something about rock music at festivals it just hits different angel <laughs> I always want to support artists or French speaking artists because I took French in high school, you know, je parle français. Someone used to call me Angel, but we could talk about that later. Is my name could be a girl or a boy name or an angel. Next is Wet Leg, indie rock band. Like, their music videos just captivate you. Their entire vibe just captivate you. So if you guys haven't checked out Wet Leg, check out their music videos. You guys get to catch them at Coachella. They're going to be a good time. Again, not a lot of hip hop in this lineup, but Metro Boomin, one of the best producers in the game. And he's going to bring in a lot of guest performers. Travis Scott, Future are all big possibilities. You do not want to miss Metro Boomin because either weekend one or weekend two, he's going to bring us some fire guest performers. <laughs> Becky G was at Coachella last year as a guest performer during Carol G and she actually came out during Grupo Firme and like was like waving the flag at the end of weekend two. I want to see Becky G for a lot of reasons. One, I want to support like the Mexican artists that are performing there. She just had a song with Peso Pluma and she had a song with Fuerza Regida. So she's going to play some corridos. She's going to bring out one of them. I'm thinking she's going to bring out Peso Pluma because this dude's on top of the world and it would just be perfect. He's the number one streamed artist in Mexico right now. And they just had the Chanel song, which she's been promoting on her Instagram. She literally made seven posts about the Chanel song that's actually dropping tonight. Becky G is going to bring up Peso Pluma. That's one of my surprise guest performers. Now, Blondie is one of those moments. So whenever I look at festivals or Coachella lineup, especially Coachella, it's like, will I ever see this artist ever in my life? The answer is probably no. I'm pretty sure I will never see a Blondie concert ever again. But she's going to be at Coachella. And it's like, if I'm there at the festival... And there's a DJ playing at the same time. Maybe I'm going to EDC or maybe I'm going to Hard Summer. There's a chance I could probably catch this DJ somewhere else. But I will never be able to catch Blondie, pop legend from the 80s, you know. So Gorillas, I got to see them in 2010. Um, Sunday 2010, they headlined. And now they're not even headliners. That's, I don't know, the state of the music of Gorillas. So they play with the whole band, like, live. And they have, uh, in 2010 at least, they had, like, visuals. Some of their visuals in the background. Some of the music videos and stuff. Or the visuals from the music videos and the Plastic Beach album. A lot of stuff when they were performing. You have the animated characters, like, on the big screen while the real musicians are playing and singing. So I think Gorillaz is going to be fun. I don't want to say it's universal, but it's like a blend of rock and hip-hop. So a lot of people really like that. And they're like a cartoon band, online at least. It has, like, a universal appeal. Hey, what's up, and then Bad Bunny, of course. So Bad Bunny, there is a concern because Bad Bunny hurt and dislocated his shoulder at WrestleMania last Sunday. Is he going to be performing with the sling? Is he going to be like now 100% when he performs? That's going to be interesting to see how bad the injury is. Maybe he's going to have to wear like some kind of brace. Bad Bunny, it was the number one artist in the world in 2022. And he's already catching all the headlines and all the Latinas hate him because he's dating Kylie Jenner or Kendall Jenner. But to be honest, do not fall for these traps. Where like I, I see people actually getting upset. When it's marketing, like these people dating the Kardashians, it's marketing. They're beautiful women too and stuff. I don't want to take into that, but it's marketing. Like these celebrities date each other so they could create a headline. So what happened when the picture started coming out with Bad Bunny and then the Jenner girl, Kendall Jenner, Kendall Jenner, right? Yeah. Then they just make a ton of meme pages, articles, people talking about Bad Bunny. Oh, he's dating this girl, the Kardashian curse and blah. Why Bad Bunny doing this and Bad Bunny that. And then Bad Bunny... 
is just doing marketing, bro. Like at the beginning of the year, he dates her, gets all the articles made, all the meme pages, people talking about her. Then he comes out on the cover of Time magazine. Boom, more articles written about him, more people in the comments. Then he comes out on um, one of those like driving karaoke shows. Boom, like that's going, that's going viral. And then the comments, people are hating on that. Then he comes out on WrestleMania, more marketing for him, you know, more articles. He gets hurt at WrestleMania, more articles. Then now he's going to headline Coachella and it's going to be, oh, first Latino to headline Coachella. Then his performance is going to go viral on TikTok and social media. And there's going to be more articles. This is just part of the game. Like these are fabricated stories to get us to pay attention more to the music, to get these artists to another level. So don't fall for these tricks. I'm just putting you guys on game right now. So even though there might be like in a real relationship or whatever, it's marketing. Now, one of the artists I want to see the most is Tale of Us. Create some incredible visuals of like futuristic robots, kind of like Westworld, kind of like Ex Machina, like kind of visuals of these robotic sceneries. Experiencing that, whether it's at the main stage at the Sahara and then just being engulfed by the visuals. And that's what the Tale of Us is going to bring. That's going to be one of the best sets of the weekend. <laughs> And I had a bunch of people hit me up to tell them to check it out once the lineup dropped. Shout out to Anna V, Girl from the Heat, and shout out to Adam and the homie Brian. They're like, yeah, Eladio Carrion gets down. Check out his new album. Look at all the features. And this was got features on like Lil Wayne and Future. Oh, the song with Future, bro. You guys got to listen to the song with Future. It's crazy. And also, he's got songs with Bad Bunny. So maybe he comes out during Bad Bunny as a guest performer. My predictions for Bad Bunny... Bad Bunny's definitely going to bring out a bunch of people. I think he's going to bring out Jay Cortez. He's going to bring out Jay Balvin. He's probably going to bring out Becky G because they're going to perform the same day at the same stage. Becky G performs maybe like a 7 p.m., 6 p.m. on the main stage. Me gustan mayores. I don't know the song. So, yeah, Bad Bunny's going to have a bunch of guest performers. You know, watch some Spanish hip hop. It's going to be dope. It's like this was badass, bro. And he's got a sick beard. And I support dudes with sick beards. Se uh, next is the Killer Roy. The Killer Roy again. Um. Uh, I think they just makes fun music. It's more like a Gen Z artist. And also, he might bring out Justin Bieber. Suicide Boys. I want to see Suicide Boys. I know that shit's going to turn up. And now the number one artist I have for Saturday. It's going to be really tough. Eric Prides, bro, is doing a hologram show. And imagine a hologram at the Sahara tent. Like, you're in the, in the middle of the Sahara tent. And then on top of you, there's like a spaceship. Or like a, a hand reach now or like a giant eyeball or I don't know what kind of visuals he's going to debut for Coachella. Like these incredible 3D renderings in the sky. Like this is the future of music and we're experiencing this at Coachella. And it's like I feel like it's a must watch. Now the thing that scares me the most about Eric Prides, he might be playing at the same time as Blackpink on the main stage. So we're going to uh, we're gonna get a scenario and that's I'm already like dreading it, but we're going to get Blackpink on the main stage. And Sahara Tent, the hologram show. And I'm going to have to make a tough decision at that time. Um, we'll see what the set times actually look like. And Blackpink, they're right now they're renting out the MGM Grand in Vegas to do their full performance. You know, Blackpink is going to kill it. Like, they killed it at the Sahara. I got to see them at the 2019 performance in the Sahara Tent. I think they performed on Friday, like at 7 p.m. in the Sahara. They were badass. And now they're at the main stage as a headliner, the first K-pop group to headline Coachella. And they're going to put on an amazing performance, even if you're not a fan of K-pop. I think you just it's one of those shows you don't want to miss. So that's what scares me between Eric Prides and Blackpink. I'm going to have to make some tough decisions. And not to mention, there's another artist that's going to be closing now after Blackpink. According to the Coachella app, Calvin Harris is going to be playing on Saturday. Like, he literally makes some of the best music and the most fun music. He closed out Coachella 2016. And he had a bunch of guest performers. Rihanna came out, Sam Smith. Um, I don't even know who else, but Calvin Harris has so much fun. So can't wait for Calvin Harris. So that's on Saturday. So Saturday's going to be tough. A lot of DJs, Blackpink, Calvin Harris. It's going to be fun. Conexión Divina is a female Sierreño group. I want to support Mexican artists. And this is the first Sierreño group that's all female led that I've ever heard of. I might be able to interview them before Coachella, but I don't know. If I do, that's badass, but we'll see. So Conexión Divina, I'm excited to see them. The only thing that scares me is they're going to start really early on Sunday. And I know Saturday night's going to be a rager after Calvin Harris. We're going to be home like at 2, 3 in the morning. Maybe we'll go to some after parties. And I'm not going to be able to sleep 
and then go see Conexión Divina like at 12 or 1 p.m. I hope they play a little bit later. I hope they're not super early, but I'll try to make it for Conexión Divina even if they're early. Los Bichos, they I play like psychedelic cumbias, and they're like girls from all over the world. Um, they're from like Britain, and there's some from, I think one girl's from Argentina. I don't know the whole blend, but I got to see them last year in Palm Springs, and they're pretty cool. Um, again, they're going to be really early, so we'll see how that, that goes. I got a bunch of comments on my YouTube channel when the lineup dropped. Like, people don't even know what they're getting with Knock Loose. I had never heard of them. My homie Izzy said, oh, you got to check out Knock Loose. And I was like, okay, let me start. Once I started listening to every artist in the lineup and I got to Knock Loose, I saw one of their performances. Is oh, my God, this is going to be... You just want to feel the guitars and the energy and the drums and people jumping on stage and jumping into the... Are going to be in the Mojave tent or maybe the Gobi tent, like something more? Or maybe they'll do it at the outdoor theater. I don't know. I don't know where they're going to be playing. I just know there's going to be some debauchery going on in there. I want to be part of it. So knock loose somebody I want to see. Next up, I have Ray Shremmerd. I think when I was in college, like their songs started coming out. They, um during the Coachella 2015 performance, they were at Coachella at the Sahara tent. There was somebody walking around giving out free... um bandanas that say like Ray Shremmerd all over them. Ray Shremmerd and I was wearing it at Coachella last year. I think I still have it somewhere. It's this yellow and red bandana and I've been wearing that to Coachella every year since 2015 just because it's like, oh cool, I got it from Ray Shremmerd. So I guess I'm a fan. <laughs> I don't even listen to the music that much, but I know it's going to be cool seeing them coming back and um, again, not a lot of hip hop. So I'll be going to as many hip hop acts as I can. There's other ones I want to see on this list. Glorilla, Willow. <laughs> I want to see Willow Smith. We have The Blaze. The Blaze is an international like artist. His music videos are crazy. Like they're really cinematic and they tell these stories. I wonder if his performances are gonna be that like curated. The one I really want to see is Porter Robinson. I was watching uh, one of his sets and he does like a one man show basically. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but that shit looked crazy. Like I watched this one set. He was like a there was like a giant screen behind him and he was playing like different instruments and singing and just a sick show. Like that's something if you were to chill and watch something like that, that's something like that. Next up we have Bjork. And the same thing as Blondie is one of those iconic artists that you'll never get to see ever in your life. And I know Coachella early years Bjork actually headlined Coachella before, so it's like a Coachella headliner coming back, and we'll be able to catch one of those sets, so I want to see Bjork. And then finally, Frank Ocean, headliner. He doesn't have social media, he doesn't do performances, he doesn't drop music. Frank Ocean, let me know who you want to see in the comments below, and I'll see you guys at Coachella.